What's happening? Today, I want to talk with you about the Tart Tent Pro Trail Tent. Now, I first ordered this tent when I was planning my trip to Philmont High Adventure Camp with the Scouts. I wanted something really lightweight, really easy to carry. I was trying to lessen the burden I had for hiking 60 some miles in the New Mexico Rockies. Being from Florida and accustomed to Florida elevation, I wasn't sure how it was going to affect me being at that elevation with those kind of mountains and hiking like that because I had never done it before. Closest I've done is parts of the Appalachian Trail, which does have a lot of elevation change, but it doesn't have the overall elevation that you have out in the Rockies. So I wanted something as light as possible, but still comfortable. I am accustomed to camping in a hammock, so I wasn't sure how going back to ground was going to be. It turned out the Tarp Tent Pro Trail was very comfortable and very lightweight for the hike worked out really well. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the specs of the Pro Trail. I'm gonna set it up for you so you can see how you set it up and really get a good review and idea of the Tarp Tent Pro Trail. As far as weight goes, the website says that the tent by itself, no ground cover with the stakes, no poles, is 26 ounces. So just below two pounds. I added a Tyvek ground cover, which I have packed in here all in one thing and that brings the weight up to 2.1 pounds i also changed out the stakes so i got some titanium stakes not so much to be lighter weight but because i want, wanted something that wasn't going to bend in the rocky rough terrain of the new mexico rocky mountains and they worked out perfectly for that even though they're titanium i think they actually add a little extra weight to the tent versus the easton aluminum stakes that come with the tent but I didn't have to worry about them bending while I was on trail. Now, when I ordered my Pro Trail, I also ordered the custom made poles. It's designed to work with hiking sticks. When I was in New Mexico, I used these, the poles, and the one thing I found is it's not so much the weight, they add four ounces according to the website. When I put them in the bag with my tent and weighed them, it was 2.6 pounds. So they definitely add a little weight, but it wasn't really the weight that bothered me. It's that they're longer than the bag the tent comes in, and they're actually a little wider than my backpack. So they cause my backpack to stick out, and there really wasn't an easy way to carry them. When I go back to Philmont next summer, my plan is to just use the hiking poles, and I'll show you when I set up the tent how I do that. It's really easy, it works really well, I'm kind of, mad at myself for not doing that in the first place. It's so simple and I was already carrying hiking poles. I should have just used them. It's a very small amount of weight, but it was really more awkward than anything else. And it's just one less thing that I've got to pack up and take with me every day on the trail. The Tarp Tent Pro Trail is a one man tent. And even though it's one man tent, it is pretty wide and allows plenty of room for my sleeping pad, plus a few extras. I'm not sure I'd feel comfortable with the backpack in there. Now at trails like Philmont or even the Appalachian Trail, you don't always keep your pack with you. At Philmont, you wanna follow the Bermuda Triangle, so your backpack needs to be separate from your tent for their bear precautions. That's just part of the precautions they take for bears and mountain lions. If a bear or a mountain lion were to find something interesting, or even a raccoon for that matter, were to find something interesting in your pack, something smells that you forgot to put in the bear bag, it's away from where you're sleeping. I would rather the bear get into my pack and not bother me while I'm sleeping in a tent where I can't really get away from them than I would having the pack in my tent with me and the bear deciding to investigate not only my pack, but me in my tent as well. So having the pack in your tent really isn't a factor, but I will say it does not have I don't believe enough room for me and my pack. It does have a small vestibule, which is nice. I keep my shoes outside the tent and I never had an issue with them getting wet, even in downpours. As long as I kept my shoes in the vestibule, they stayed perfectly dry. The Tarp Tent Pro Trail comes to you unsealed at the seams. So you either have to buy their kit to seal the seams or do it yourself. I just did it myself. It's 100% silicone caulk mixed with a little acetone, and then you just paint the seams. No issues at all with leaking. I've been in complete downpours here in Florida and never had an issue. I also used the seam sealer 
to paint three stripes on the floor, and that's to help your sleeping pad stick to the floor when you put the sleeping pad in there. I haven't noticed that that really worked real well. I've even put a second coat of seam sealer in the floor of the tent, and my sleeping pad still tends to move around a little bit. Of course, I move around a bit when I sleep also, so I'm sure that's part of it. It's never really an issue. Occasionally, I wake up with an arm or leg off of my sleeping pad, but that's about it. The Pro Trail does have a full bathtub floor, and the tarp portion of the tent has a little shelf of netting where it pulls the floor up and out so that when rain is coming down the outside of the tent, it doesn't leak into your bathtub floor. You've got a little shelf of netting there to prevent that. And as I said, I've never had any leaking issues. That being said, I do have some condensation issues. If you close up the front and the back of the tent, you will get quite a bit of condensation. This is a single wall tent, so that's to be expected. If I open up both, I don't have any issues with condensation. However, in big downpours, when you open up both ends, you do run the risk of getting a little bit of that water in there. I have done that. I don't get any water in the front because of that vestibule, but I do get a little water down at my feet with the small window at your feet, and it's not so much the water coming down from the rain, it's splashing up from the ground that can get down by your foot box of your tent, of your quilt or sleeping bag. So you're really kind of playing an options game there. You either get wet from condensation if you close up that foot area and head area, or you get wet if in a complete downpour. Again, it's only in a complete downpour like we get here in Florida on a fairly regular basis. We did get some significant rain in Philmont, but it wasn't really a downpour, it was more of an all day rain. Nothing like the downpours we get here in Florida. So you just kind of have to check the weather, make the call on your own, whether you want to deal with condensation or a little bit of rain down at your feet. It's not like it puddles or anything like that. It's just a little bit of dampness. I've searched around a lot for tents. I did a lot before I bought this one. This is still the tent I would buy if I had it to do all over again. There's a lot that come close, but I have yet to find one that has this low of a weight and as much space. I could go to a two-man tent, and that's something I considered even for next year. I thought about it again and went back and looked at tarp tents, two-man tents. The only way I could get into a two-man tent and feel comfortable about the weight is if I bumped up to a Z-Pax tent, Hexamid, their two-man tent. Then you're jumping up into the Dyneema fabric, and it's more than double the price of this tarp tent. At the time I bought the, my tarp tent Pro Trail, it was $274. As of right now, the z Pax is $699. So that's a huge difference in cost just to get more space. The one nice thing about the z Pax tent that I don't have with the tarp, trip, tarp tent is that the z Pax Dyneema fabric is really, really tough, so you don't need a ground cloth. Other than that, you know, it's really just a little extra space and less weight. I love the Tarp Tent Pro Trail. Like I said, that's exactly what I would get again if I had it to do all over. I'm taking it back with me to Philmont next year and going to be completely comfortable in that tent and know it's not gonna be too much weight for me and it's gonna be comfortable at night when I go to bed. Let's go set it up so you can see what it looks like all built and how easy the setup process is. The Tarp Tent Pro Trail is a two-hole tent, or two hiking stick tent. I'm going to do the hiking sticks or the trekking poles as my poles. That's the more complicated option. If you get the custom poles from Tarp Tent, it's very straightforward. They're built specifically for the Pro Trail, so you really don't have to figure a whole lot out. You do have to play around a little bit with the trekking poles to figure out the right height for your tent. Let's get started and set this tent up and you can see exactly how long it takes to set it up. The way I do it is set up my ground cloth first and then I'm gonna stake the tent up and the last thing I'll do is put the poles in. That seems to be the easiest way to set it up. I always start by finding the door first.
You will notice the ground cloth kind of blows all over the place. I get it adjusted one final time once I get the tent up. As far as staking it out, I just rough stake it. It's just gonna help with putting the poles in. All right, now that I've got it rough staked, I just open up my trekking poles and I'll make final adjustments as I put it into the tent. You can see there's a little pocket here for your pole, front pole. It's got a little notch. I take the tip of my hiking stick, put it right into that notch. You'll feel it click in there. There's your front pole. Looks like I'm pretty good. It's got a front guy line that just helps keep it in place. You don't have to use it, but I do. Now for the back pole. Back pole, I don't even, I start by not even adjusting the pole because it's a pretty short side. You can see I stake these out too far, so I need to undo the stakes to get it. This little eye eyelet right there. You stick your pole in. You can see without adjusting, that's a good height. Restake my corners here. And that's pretty much it. The tent is set up, few final adjustments, and you're good to go. Like I said, I'll adjust this ground claw, few of the corner stakes, but that's it. Five stakes, two poles, and you're up. This is the vestibule I mentioned. You can see it's not a whole lot of space, maybe 18 inches, but it's enough for your shoes and maybe a few other little things for you to keep dry at night. The Pro Trail does offer a full width door. However, I've found with this pole right in the middle of the door that I really only use half the door. This is the little shelf, netting shelf that I was talking about. That just helps keep water from draining directly off of the tarp onto your bathtub floor. It kind of runs along here and just drips off onto the ground. That's really what that accomplishes for you. And then you can see the small rear window where, like I said, if it rains real hard and you don't have those flaps closed, it will get a little damp in here. This is the window at the feet that when it's closed, you can see it has a little hook and loop there to keep it down when, from blowing up towards the top of your tent. It does still open a little bit, as you can see, to allow a little ventilation, but it's not enough to prevent any condensation issues. This is how it's designed to be slept in, with your head up here, that way you have maximum headroom. I'm just shy of six feet, and you can see I can, I can sit up and get changed. It's a little uncomfortable, and if it's got condensation on the tent, you'll end up with it on you when you sit up to get changed or out of your bag or whatever. But there's plenty of room. I mean, you can see I've got plenty of room on either side put my phone, my Kindle there, those types of things. I usually keep an extra hat in case it gets cold in the middle of the night, a buff for my face. Um, typically that's about it. It does have a little pocket here so you can keep a flashlight or your phone or whatever. Don't really use that a whole lot. I usually just keep it right next to me. You can play around with this pole placement to make it a little wider on one side to make it easier to get in and out. I pretty much just leave it right in the middle and it works just fine. So if I can't sleep in my hammock, I'm gonna be sleeping in my tarp tent pro trail every time. To me, this is the best, most comfortable tent in this price range. 
that I could possibly use to go to ground if I can't sleep in my hammock. One of my favorite things about the tarp tent is breaking it down. It's so easy. And when we were out of Philmont, we had 12 days of breaking down camp every day. So this made it super simple. All you do is take out the five stakes, shove it in your stuff sack, and you're done. It's that easy. I love it. Let's go. One. Five. Steak's done. Doesn't really matter whether you start with the ground cover or the tent, you're just shoving it in there. Stakes going last. That's it. I'm ready to shove in my backpack onto the next campsite. Hope you guys learned a little bit about the Tarp Tent Pro Trail. Really appreciate you guys watching, commenting, and subscribing. We'll see you next time on The Real Outdoors.